Hello all and welcome to our third instalment of Yoga Anytime with Angela. I'd like you to start this session, um, if you can, in a seated position, please, rather than our usual laid down position. Now I'm using the benefit of um, a big squashy meditation cushion just to help lift my hips a little higher. So take a few moments to get yourself into a comfortable position. And we're just going to take a moment to for now, just start with the backs of the hands rested on the inner thighs, bringing the back of the head to line up against the back of the tailbone, drawing the shoulder blades together. And we want a clear sense of lifting and lengthening out of the sit bones, almost as though we're lifting the rib cage off the belly. And we're giving space through the full expanse of the chest, through the collarbones, allowing the weight of the shoulders to release away from the ears. And feeling that gentle, soft release in the lower back as we feel the sit bones ease a little more deeply into the earth. When you're happy to do so, take a moment to close the eyes, soften the jaw and relax the tongue in the well of the mouth. Soften the muscles across the forehead. Release the temples. And bring your awareness to the breath. Feel the sensations of the breath from the tip of the nose along the nasal passages. The cool air on the breath in. The warm air on the breath out. start to slow the breath down, deepening the inhalation, lengthening the exhalation. In no rush. Coming to the end of each full breath transaction. You might start to notice that natural expansion through the lungs and the ribcage. Feeling yourself widening and expanding into the space that surrounds you. With each inhale, feel the top of the head reach towards the ceiling. With each exhale, a sense of releasing and letting go. Now we'll reposition the hands, taking one hand to rest on the heart, the other hand to rest on the belly. And continue with this deep and lengthened breath. Let's make sure we're not holding any tension in the shoulders, inhaling to squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. Then exhaling to roll the shoulders back and down. Feeling that physical effect of the deep inhalation. Noticing the belly rise. Then feeling the belly fully soften and release. Almost as though you're filling a balloon from the bottom up. Emptying that balloon from the top down. Now once more we're going to take a moment to shift the hand position. We're going to bring the hands now to take hold either side of the ribcage. So again, continuing that deep and lengthened breath. You might feel that expansion now through the sides of the ribcage. Then again, that full release. Notice once more if you're holding tension in the shoulders. Just let the weight of the shoulders release back and down. Now 
inhale on the next inhalation. Feel yourself lifting and lengthening out of the sit bones. On the exhale, extend the body to the right. Then inhale deeply again to feel that expansion into the left of the lung and the ribcage. Exhaling, feel the release. Inhaling, turning the gaze up towards the ceiling. Exhaling, that comfortable release. A further deep breath in, expanding into the left of the ribcage. On the exhale now, Gently drawing yourself back to centre and bringing the gaze forward once more, lining up to the back of the, the back of the head, to the back of the tailbone, then exhaling to take that extension to the opposite side. Feel the breath in to the right of the ribcage. Feel that release out. On this inhalation, once more, bringing the gaze up to the corner of the ceiling. A full exhalation to release. A further deep breath in. Then that exhale to release. Bringing the gaze back towards the front of the room. Now reposition the palms behind the back. Let's go to the bottom of the back of the rib cage. So above the lower back, shoulder blades drawn together. And again, just take that moment to ease the shoulders down away from the ears. Bring your awareness again to the deep and lengthened breath. Inhaling all the way to the base of the lungs. Exhaling fully. Feeling that expansion under the palms. Then that full release. Inhale to widen into this space in the middle back. And exhale to fully release. Now slide the hands a little lower. Feel the weight of the palms into the lower back. So really positioning, supporting the lower back here. Shoulder blades drawn together. On the inhale now, feel that we're lifting the ribcage up, opening the sternum towards the ceiling as you turn your gaze up. Exhale to fully release and just gently bring the gaze forward again. Inhale to lift lengthen, open through the, the sternum. Exhale, release. One further deep breath in to bring the gaze up towards the ceiling. On the exhale, this time gently nodding the chin towards the chest, releasing the hands, and repositioning the palms face down on top of the thighs. On the next exhalation, draw the tummy button in, roll through the spine and nod the chin towards the chest. On an inhale, apply gentle pressure to the palms, draw the shoulder blades together and once more open the sternum forward, keeping the chin parallel to the floor. Exhale. Roll back into that cat stretch. Inhale, lift the sternum forward. Exhale, cat stretch. Inhale, lift the sternum forward. One more roll into cat stretch. Then on the next inhalation, rather than lifting and lengthening, bring the hands up, placing the palms on opposite shoulders, almost as though you're giving yourself a hug. 
On the next inhale, lift and lengthen out of the sit bones, keeping those elbows drawn towards the chest. Widen through the back of the ribcage. On the out breath, turn your gaze over the right shoulder. On an in breath, bring your gaze back to center. On the next out breath, take it over the opposite shoulder. And come back again towards center. If you've quite comfortably had your eyes closed throughout this sequence, we'll take a moment now to gently open the eyes. So blink the eyes open. Take the hands away from the shoulders. I'm going to remove this cushion from underneath my bottom so that I can be a little closer to the floor. Extend the right arm along the mat, lift and lengthen through the left hand. So you want that sense of pressing into the palm of the right hand and extending through the fingertips of the left arm. Turn your gaze up towards that middle finger, shoulder blades drawn together and exhale to gently draw that right elbow in towards the waist as you come over the midline of the body, pressing through the fingertips, looking up again to the end of the hand. Inhale to lift and come back to centre. Extend the left arm away. We'll make the same shape on the opposite side, knowing that we're very rarely perfectly balanced. So we might find we have a little deeper reach on one side than the other. You might notice the compression into the left of the waist on this side. Deepening that stretch into the right of the ribcage. Then inhaling to lift and come back to centre. Reposition the right hand behind the hip. Bring the left hand to rest again on the knee. Lengthen out of the sit bones. Follow the ribcage and turn your gaze again over that shoulder. Shoulder blades drawn together. Then we'll bring this right hand behind and we're going to bring this hand, sorry, the left hand, to grab hold of that space above the right elbow. So you're kind of bringing the hand onto the opposite arm, opening again through the chest and just coming a little more deeply into that twist. As you exhale, release the hand, lift both arms up overhead, Press through the fingertips on an inhale. On an exhale, draw the shoulders down away from the ears. Inhale once more to lift and lengthen. Then on an out breath, opposite hand to opposite knee. Remind yourself on the inhale to re-lift out of the sit bones, shoulder blades drawn together. To come a little bit into that twist. Then bring that right hand over. Wrap it just above the left elbow. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Shoulder blades drawn together. Exhale to come a little more deeply into the twist. Then on and out breath. Release, bring the gaze forward. Position both hands behind the hips. Shoulder blades again drawn together. Sit bones remain connected to the mat. As we inhale, lift the sternum and open again into that space through the upper chest. As you exhale, release, lift and engage out of the sit bones. You may require now to open the legs a little wider to create space as we bring the hands in front of the ankles and start to take a little walk forward. Extending the sternum, easing the elbows towards the floor. Being mindful of creating a nice soft diagonal from the back of the head to the tailbone. So in no particular hurry to get the head down and round through the upper back. Keep that control through the drawing the shoulder blades together, lifting the sternum, then easing a little more deeply into this nice comfortable fold. Wide through the chest on the inhale. On the exhale, draw the tummy button in. Lift your gaze again to the end of the fingers and walk the hands back towards the ankles. 
switch the ankles over so that leg cross is the opposite way. Lifting and lengthening out of the sit bones and extend both arms forward. We want a sense of pressing through the fingertips, but not pulling the shoulders forward. So again, draw the shoulder blades together, lift the sternum, feel the ribcage lift off of the belly, lining up the back of the head to the tailbone. Then bring the hands together. We'll put left forefinger to the top of right as we come to an open heart interlock. Elbows remain soft as we inhale to turn the hands inside out. Exhale to soften the shoulders from the ears and engage the core. On the next inhalation, float those hands up overhead, pressing through the palms, drawing the shoulders down away from the ears. Feel yourself equally weighted through the sit bones as we ease the upper body to the right, opening out into the left of the rib cage and now getting into that space under the armpit. Now turn your gaze up, so you're looking past that left shoulder, deepening the extension into this left side, engaging the core, inhaling to come back to centre, then exhaling to take that extension to the opposite side. Take a moment again to fix your gaze over the elbow, exhaling a little more deeply into the extension, engaging the core, then inhaling to return again to centre. We'll keep those palms facing forward, nicely opening out the space through the palms of the hands, the backs of the fingers into the wrists. And when you're ready, separate the hands. We'll bring that interlock behind. We'll place right forefinger to the top of the stack this time, shoulder blades drawn together. Try to keep the knees soft. Engage the core, line up the back of the head with the tailbone and draw the hands away from the lower back, opening through the sternum. Nice stretch through the front of the biceps, over the pectoral muscles, releasing the deltoids, those muscles over the shoulders as you squeeze the shoulder blades together. On an out breath, release, separate the hands. And we'll repeat again that forward fold. We stack the legs differently this time. So it may be that you feel you can't quite get as far or it might feel more comfortable for you on this side. Pay attention to the ankles, to the knees. And if you need to adjust your position by widening the legs, then do so. Shoulder blades drawn together, easing the weight of the sternum forward and down. Bring the weight of the forearms to the mat. Engaging the core, lifting your gaze to the end of the fingers, then walking the hands back towards the ankles. Reposition both hands behind the hips. We might find that we need to lean into the palms, shoulder blades drawn together, but we'll redistribute that weight by pressing the shins forward, lifting the bottom from the floor, opening through the thighs, the belly, the chest. Breathing into this space, expanding and widening. Then on and out breath, bringing the sit bones back towards the floor. Lifting and lengthening again out of the sit bones. Returning that space, bringing the hands forward. Remember to draw the shoulders back, palms together, this time right forefinger over left. We'll return to an interlock, but we'll keep the palms facing in to heart. On an out breath, draw the tummy button in. We'll repeat that cat stretch again. So we're rolling the spine to the back of the room. You might feel the tailbone tucking under. Allow the chin to nod to the chest. Then inhale to lift and lengthen turning the hands inside out, opening the palms overhead. Because we've stacked the fingers slightly differently, it just might feel a little different to the last time we over, we took the hands overhead. On an out breath, guide the hands back to heart centre. Then separate the hands. We'll take a moment just to Use the hands on the knees to take the feet wide. We might be getting pins and needles in the feet. 
and just slide a little further back. So both toes pointing up to the ceiling, a little slack behind the knees, making sure that we're not rolling back onto the tailbone. So we want that sense of connecting and lifting out the sit bones, lifting the rib cage off the belly, softening the shoulders away from the ears. And then again, we'll take the hands in front of the body and we'll just allow a little walk forward to just get into that space in the inner thighs, in and around the hips. This might feel a little extreme, so just take it steady, there's no rush. And we can always leave that slack behind the knees so that we're not pulling onto the back of the knee joints. Exhale to engage the core. Walk the hands back to centre. Then we're going to take that right hand over the right thigh, position the left hand to the inside of that thigh. Lift and lengthen out of the sit bones and follow the rib cage again to begin a twist. On an out breath, a little walk forward. I recognise that in pregnancy we will be very limited for space here. So if you need to take that walk forward in centre, then simply repeat that action. Shoulder blades drawn together. Sit bones again equally weighted. Exhaling to draw the tummy button in walking the hands back towards centre. Make sure that we rotate the rib cage forward, then we'll take the opposite hand in front, behind, lift up out of the sit bones. Keep that connection through the sit bones as you take that little walk forward. Inhaling to lengthen the spine, exhaling to come a little deeper into this space. Shoulder blades drawn together. And this time, rather than lifting back to centre, we'll lift the arms up, extend through the fingertips and just ease the upper body weight forward. Come into an interlock here, doesn't matter which finger is on top. And we'll aim to keep that interlock at the same height as shoulder level. Exhale to engage the core. Then we'll slowly, gently slide those hands over the right foot. Exhale, engage the core. Inhale to lift up and we'll slide those hands back again towards the left hip. Lifting up and lengthening, then bringing the hands back to that centre point. So again, we'll keep the hands high rather than bringing them to the floor and we'll simply allow the weight of the arms to just draw us a little more deeply into this space. Think again about that curvature in the spine, lifting out of the sit bones. Then as you exhale, engage the core and bring yourself back towards centre. Lovely. Now bring the soles of the feet together coming into a seated Baddha Konasana. So oftentimes we find that we hold one knee higher. We might feel a little um, imbalanced through the sit bones. So work with gravity, allow the knees to release to the position that's comfortable for you. The intention is to have the soles of the feet just gently touching and our hold is either on the ankles or the toes, but again, it's very gentle. There's no pulling on the wrists. Lift and lengthen out of the sit bones, shoulder blades drawn together. On an exhale, ease the sternum forward. So once more, we're coming into this space in the inner thighs, lifting and lengthening, softening and releasing a little more deeply into this space. Wide through the chest, shoulder blades drawn together. Keeping that diagonal from the back of the head to the tailbone, then exhaling to engage the core, inhaling to return again towards centre. Take hold of the right foot, push through the heel. Enjoy a nice gentle stretch through the back of the leg. Some of you will be feeling it more in the calf, some into the hamstring. The key is not to let your weight tip over to the opposite side. So remain equally weighted through the sit bones, lift up and lengthen. And if balance is proving a challenge, extend the opposite arm just to find that counter between the weight of the leg and the upper body. As you exhale, 
engage the core, bring that foot back to centre. As you inhale, lift and lengthen, coming to the opposite side. So core is engaged, keeping the rib cage lifted off the belly, pressing through that heel, gently does it as we slowly open out into that hamstring and back of the calf. If you feel confident to do so, after we bring the feet together, take both feet, push through the heels, keep that lift out of the sit bones. You'll feel that you're rolling back to the tailbone. So try to keep lifting through the sternum, lengthening through the spine, opening through the back of the legs. Then when you're ready, once more, bring the soles of the feet together, widen the knees, lift out of the sit bones and ease forward. Shoulder blades drawn together. All that lovely space for the lower back. Not so lovely in the core. <laughs> As you exhale, draw the tummy button in, then inhale to lift again to centre. Extend both legs forward. We'll come into a dandasana position. I'll just turn side on and demonstrate this more clearly. So again, that's that straight line from the back of the head to the tailbone. Our natural posture tends to be here. So we have to think and work quite hard to lift out of the sit bones, to draw the shoulder blades together. And I always feel turning the toes up to the ceiling activates to lengthen the back of the hamstrings and to switch on these thigh muscles. You probably feel that they've gone quite firm. If you can visualize lifting the knees towards the hips, it contracts these muscles in the front of the thighs. And again, it helps to lengthen and open out the hamstrings. Extend both arms forward, shoulder blades drawn together. We'll keep that, the hands shoulder width apart as we inhale to lift the arms overhead, making a nice L shape, pressing through the fingers, sinking into the sit bones, pushing through the heels, active through the full length of the body, waking up our inner Agni, the fire in our belly. You might notice that the thighs start to become warm. There might even be jelly beans happening. That means we're doing it right. So visualize sending the breath to the thighs. Every exhale is releasing tension. Every inhale is nourishing, energizing, recharging our batteries to keep this strength and this length in our posture. On an out breath, engage the core, bring the hands to an Anjali Mudra and slide that back towards the heart. Feel that drawing of the shoulder blades together, releasing of the shoulders away from the ears. Again, that opening through the soles of the feet, engaging the top of the thighs. Now reposition the hands either side of the hips. We'll walk the feet in, creating a 90 degree angle at the knees to make a table position. So ideally we want the knees, the hips and the shoulders in the same plane. It's not unusual for the bottom to pull us down. So if you need to go a little wider in the feet, visualize pressing the shins forward, lifting the thighs, opening through the collarbones, widening through the chest. We need a little strength in the upper body to hold us up. But remember, if we're equally weighted, we can position more strength into the thighs. Then on and out breath, release, slide the bottom towards the floor. And we'll just take a moment to lie back, rolling back, bringing the knees to the chest. Then gently rocking from one hip to the other, softening and releasing across the sacrum, onto the buttocks, into the lower back. Then replace both feet on the floor. We'll keep the knees bent. We'll bring the hands either side of the hips, taking a moment to slide the shoulders up towards the ears, then to exhale and push the fingertips down towards the ankles, sliding the shoulders up, then exhaling, engaging the core, pushing the fingertips away, then relaxing the shoulders back to the floor. So we've gently drawn the shoulders away from the ears on the next out breath. Turn the gaze over the right shoulder, bringing that ear parallel to the floor. 
On the out breath, draw the tummy button in, then bring your gaze back to center. Keep that core engagement, exhaling now to turn the gaze over the left shoulder. Wide through the chest on the inhale, on the exhale, engaging the core and sliding the head back again towards centre. On the next out breath, draw the tummy button in and feel yourself pushing the lower back to the floor. So we're effectively filling that little gap under the lower back. Inhale to lift and lengthen through the right leg, gently pointing and flexing, mobilising the ankle, lengthening the calf again. Pressing through the heel, drawing the back of the hips to the floor, encouraging that deeper stretch to the back of the leg. Now bend that knee in towards the chest, but we'll direct the knee over towards the right shoulder. So we're taking it a little wider, opening into the inner thigh and again mobilising through the back of the hips. Then replace that foot to the floor keeping the knees hip width apart, repositioning the hands either side of the hips, then inhaling to lift and lengthen through the left leg. So again, that gentle point and flex, warming the ankle joint, opening out into the back of the calf, into the hamstring, pressing through the heel, drawing the hips back to the floor, a little more intense. Then when you're ready, bending that right knee, that left knee in, directing that knee over to the left shoulder. So again, we're creating space, widening into the lower back. Then drawing that knee back again to center and replacing the foot to the floor. Make sure those heels have remained hip width distance apart, the insides of the feet parallel. Bring the hands either side of the hips, shoulder blades drawn together. So a nice firm base here through the flats of the shoulder blades, the soles of the feet. That nice connection through the flat bone above the bottom. Exhaling to draw the tummy button in, then inhaling to push into the soles of the feet, lifting the bottom from the floor. Notice if the shoulders lift up. Take a moment to relax the collarbones again, widen through the chest. Push into the soles of the feet and on the next inhale, as you press the shins forward, lift the arms overhead. Rest the backs of the hands on the floor. Relax through the chest, through the shoulders. Every inhalation, we're re-lengthening the front of the body. So pushing through the thighs, or sorry, pushing through the shins, lifting the thighs. Exhaling now to squeeze the buttocks, engaging those glute muscles, lifting the right heel, then pushing that heel to the floor, lifting the left heel, then pushing that heel to the floor, re-lengthening again, pressing the shins forward, widening through the chest, then on the next exhale, core engaged, Squeeze the buttocks, lift both heels from the mat. So pushing into the balls of the feet, engaging those gluteal muscles. Then on the next out breath, lower the heels, widen the space through the chest, taking your time to roll down through the spine, lifting those arms up and over in a gentle arch motion working through middle back, coming to lower back, then softening the buttocks, turning the palms up again to the ceiling, sliding the arms up to make a T shape, shoulder blades drawn together, exhaling to draw the tummy button in, lift both knees towards the chest, then roll the knees over to the right side, turning your gaze along the length of the left arm. Take your time here. Let gravity release the thighs to the floor. Try to keep that left shoulder relaxed to the mat. Your gaze over the left hand. Breathing into the side of the ribcage. 
So a bit like where we started and we directed the breath to different parts of the rib cage. Visualize expanding and widening into that left rib. Then softening and releasing, feeling the weight of your upper body sink back to the floor. Another full deep breath in. On the exhale, engage the core, roll the knees back towards centre. Then on the next out breath, simply roll to the opposite side. So again, we're in no rush to get the knees to the floor. We let gravity take care of that space at the side of the hip. And we focus on easing that right shoulder to the floor. Every out breath, feeling the upper body become heavier. Aware of the in breath expanding and widening into the right of the rib cage. The exhale, softening the weight back to the floor. Once more, that deep expansion into the right of the rib. The exhale to draw the tummy button in. Keep that core engagement as you roll the knees back towards centre. Bring the hands again on top of the knees or behind the thighs if that's more comfortable. As we draw a figure of eight, rocking again over the back of the hips. And just keeping that space in the lower back nice and soft. Now replace the left foot to the floor as we bring that right knee a little closer and we'll bring the right hand to take hold of that big toe. So ideally we want the back of the head rested to the floor, pressing through the heel of the right foot. Obviously the arms are shorter than the legs so there will be a bend in the knee. If we push straight up to begin with, we kind of get a sense of a deeper stretch opening here, just from the buttocks to the start, the insertion point of the, the hamstring. Extend that left arm out to the side and let the weight of your upper body again sink to the floor. We're mindful of pressing through the heel, deepening the stretch. Then we'll keep that core engagement as we allow that right leg to float out to the right side. So you might feel like you're rolling onto the right hip. So if needs be, open the left knee to keep that equal weight through the back of the, the hips. Pressing now through the right heel, deepening the stretch into the inside of the right thigh. The gaze over the left arm, the shoulders relaxed. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in and bring that leg back towards centre. Soften the knee, hug the knee in, taking the knee to the right shoulder to allow for that extra space. Then replace that foot to the floor. I let my left knee open so I need to bring it back to centre. Then draw the left knee in, bring the hand to the inside of the bent knee. Take hold of either the big toe or you can wrap your hands around the feet if that's more comfortable. Extend the right arm, shoulders relaxed back and down, then push again through the heel. So we feel that stretch, perhaps through the calf initially, then into the back of the hamstring. We just want to make sure that we're not opening and lifting the bottom from the floor. So weight down through the back of the hips. As we start to slide that left foot out to the side, remember you might need to counterbalance by opening the right knee a little wider pressing through the heel, bringing the stretch now to the inner thigh and turning the gaze along the right arm. Shoulders relaxed, upper body released, wide through the chest, pressing through the heel just to gently intensify this stretch. Then on and out breath, draw the tummy button in and slide that foot back again to centre. Bringing the right knee back in, Hugging that left knee to the chest, out to the shoulder to accommodate the space. Then replace that foot to the floor. Bring both feet together, roll the knees out, reposition the hands now. We're going to make an interlock to cup the back of the head. 
So we're resting the back of the head into the open palms, widening the elbows so we can feel a connection, upper arm, lower arm, shoulders flat, just allowing gravity to deepen into the inner thigh. Wide through the chest on the inhale. On the exhale, drawing the tummy button up and in. Every out breath, remembering that action of drawing the tummy button up and in. Get the benefit of engaging the pelvic floor as well as opening out the inner thigh. On your next out breath, Keep that core engagement, tummy button up and in as you slide the thighs towards one another. Now the next posture I'm going to demonstrate is not recommended in pregnancy, so you may prefer to sit this one out. Draw the knees in towards the chest, take hold of the toes. The first action is to push the heels up towards the ceiling. This will be fine to do in pregnancy, but in a moment we're going to roll to one side and we'll keep ourselves in centre if this doesn't feel right. So the intention is to stay holding on to the toes, not to let go of the toes. So we're using the core engagement to roll all the way to the right. Use the core engagement to roll back to centre, then take it all the way to the left. So we're effectively rolling from one side to the other. We're using the core strength to lift us up and over. We're not using the hands to push us up. Do one more to this left side, then come back towards center, bending the knees, taking hold of the toes. And we can gently rock from one side to the other. No big effort, just a release. Then come back to center, release the feet, Hug both knees in towards the chest, then replace the feet to the mat. So mindful that we've been laying on our back for a while, I'm going to make a suggestion that we take our time to come to a seated position. So either roll to the left side for low blood pressure and in pregnancy, or take it to the right if that feels comfortable for you. And we'll come back up into an all fours position. So knees underneath the hips, wrists underneath the shoulders, wide through the chest. So you really feel that you're drawing the shoulder blades together. So as we practice laying on the floor there, we have the assistance of gravity. When we draw the tummy button in, you kind of want the sense of drawing it in and up. If we exaggerate that, we tend to lift the lower back. So we'll stay in neutral spine. And we'll get a sense of exhaling to draw the tummy button in, lifting up. And you might just feel that gentle tightening at the, the lower part of the, the, maybe the pelvis. What's the word I'm trying to find? Pelvic floor, that's the word. Perfect. So now we'll turn both toes under. Exhale, draw the tummy button in. And we can be a little more exaggerated here. Make note that when we do the cat stretch, we ideally want to lift from the lower back not the space between the shoulder blades. So we're curving up through the spine, tucking the tailbone under, then nodding the chin to the chest, then resting on the tops of the feet, reversing that curve, lifting the sternum forward, easing into the lower back. Exhaling to roll up, lift from the lower back, back of the hips first, nod the chin under, then inhale, reverse that curve, opening the sternum forward, shoulder blades drawn together. Then release back to that neutral spine position. Slide the left foot back, turn the toe under, push through the heel, deepen the stretch into the calf now. Then bring that knee back in. Take the opposite foot back, nice long stretch through the calf. Then bring that knee back again towards centre. 
We're going to take the knees wide now. So we're taking the knees a little wider than um, the width of the mat, drawing the toes together. So it kind of makes a diamond shape with the lower body. Lowering now onto the elbows. So feeling that the elbows are directly underneath the shoulders, but you're equally weighted through the forearms. So you can feel that gentle pressure in the palms all the way back to the elbows. Then on and out breath, push the sit bones towards the heels. So we're traveling in a straight line, we're making a nice plane. If it's comfortable to do so, you can bring your forehead to the floor. That will make a diagonal from the back of the head to the tailbone. And again, we're just gonna take a moment in this posture to reacquaint ourselves with the breath. So as you deepen the inhalation, feel that expansion to the back of the rib cage. As you exhale, just let go of that and soften through the shoulders, through the hips, deepening towards the floor. Inhaling to expand and widen through the back of the body. Exhaling to soften and release. Another full breath rotation in this wide leg child's pose. Then press again into the forearms. So we feel that engagement from the elbows to the palms, lifting back up, repositioning the wrists under the shoulders, bringing the knees back in underneath the hips, resetting that neutral spine, turning both toes under, pushing the sit bones back and lifting the knees from the floor so that we feel nice and steady, nice and supported we might be able to get our heels to the mat with the knees bent. It doesn't matter if we can't. If we need a little more space in the hips, take the feet wider. We want to visualize again a diagonal line. So push away from the palms, lengthening away from the wrists, lifting the tailbone, softening the knees, pushing the sit bones to the back of the room, resting the ears between the upper arms. Then on and out breath releasing onto the shins, sitting back to the heels. And if it's more comfortable for you, you can go back to that wide leg child's pose. Gives us more space across the belly. Bringing the forehead towards the floor, doesn't matter if it doesn't reach. Breathing into that space in the lower back. Letting go of any tension here. Then bring yourself back up into another all fours position, preparing to come a little more um, into this downward facing dog sequence. So shoulder blades drawn together, core engaged. When we draw the tummy button in, we draw it up. So we also engage the pelvic floor. Turn both toes under again, push the sit bones back, this time we will lift the knees from the floor, but we'll keep a little slack on the knees just to give us a little bit of relief before we start pummeling the backs of the legs. Think again about lifting the tailbone. So again, we've got that nice diagonal line from the wrist through the back of the head to the back of the hips. Then bend the right knee, pushing the left heel to the floor, then switch that emphasis over. Now, as we're moving from one foot to the other, it's important we don't swing the hips to accommodate. So try to keep the hips and the shoulders in the same plane. Exhaling to breathe both heels towards the floor, lifting the tailbone. Imagine that strap over your thighs, pulling the back of the thighs towards the back of the room. Then on and out breath, release, bringing the shins to the floor sitting back in the heels. I would recommend bringing the wrists either side of the ankles. We'll keep the head down and just rotate the wrists, making little circles. Then return once more to an all fours position. Perfect. So to give the wrists a little bit of a break, I'm going to take us down onto the forearms again. So elbows underneath the shoulders, just bring the tips of the thumbs together. 
lift the tailbone, push the sit bones to the back of the room and bring the forehead to the floor. So it's not a big action. It gives us a little more opening through the back of the shoulder blades. It might feel a little tight in the lower back, depending on where you hold tension. Let's just breathe to this space. Lovely. Now lift the head from the floor. In pregnancy, I'd like you to sit this next posture out. You have earned the right to not do any planks. We'll bring the shoulders directly over the elbows, walk the feet back, turn the toes under, and again, we'll come to a nice um, diagonal. So the thighs are parallel to the floor. We don't want the bottom up in the air. We overload the elbows when we do that and it's not working the core. So we'll come back to that thighs parallel to the mat, collarbones wide, shoulder blades drawn together. On the out breath, draw the tummy button in and up. Then on the exhale, lower the thighs, the belly, the chest to the floor. Slide the elbows out, press into the forearms, inhale to lift the chest. As you exhale, lower down. Reposition the hands either side of the chest. Push back again into a child's pose, wide knee if you prefer. Creating a little more space through this child's pose by lifting the fingertips, pressing the wrists to the mat. Wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes. Replace the palms to the floor. Lifting back up into the all fours position. I promise you this is our last downward facing dog of this session. Not ever. Turn the toes under, push the sit bones back, lift up again into that confident downward facing dog. Ideally, we want to try to get one heel to the floor. So it doesn't matter if we can't get both heels down, but let's aim to get the left heel to the floor, lift the right foot up, make sure you don't swing your um, weight over to the left hip. So hips parallel to the floor, then bring that right foot behind, little toe to little toe and press the heel to the floor. Lift the tailbone, lengthen through the spine, Lift that foot up and over. I'm assuming we're all fine to go to the other side. If you need a rest, just hit pause. So we're now pressing the right heel to the floor, lifting the left foot up. Again, keeping the hips parallel to the mat as we bring that left foot behind, little toe to little toe, push the heels to the floor, lift the tailbone. Working again with the breath, exhaling to draw the tummy button up and in. Then lifting that foot up and over. Coming back to your full downward facing dog. Then on and out breath, bend the knees, sit back on the heels. As you come into that full release, let the shoulders slump forward. Bring the wrists either side of the ankles. We'll let the upper arms become heavy. Then we can lift the wrists from the floor, rolling little circles, easing off any tension. Now bring the hands back either side of the head. We'll ease ourselves up. We won't be in on this position for long into hero pose, realigning the back of the head with the tailbone turning the palms towards the front of the room and almost a bit like a belly dancer. We're just drawing little circles with the wrists. Just getting rid of that tension from the downward facing dog, holding ourselves up, easing out through the shoulders, lifting the arms up overhead. Then on the way back down, we'll just flick the hands, flick the wrists, little bit of razzle dazzle. Lovely. Bring the hands again to an interlock behind the lower back. We're going to go for left forefinger over right to get that balance again. Shoulder blades drawn together. 
push into the shins. So we lift the bottom from the heels. We stop thighs from going any further forward than this hip height. So turn the tailbone under, draw the tummy button in, lift through the sternum. Just let the weight of your arms draw the chest open. We're just countering all that opening through the back of the rib cage. Then as you exhale, hinge forward, palms to the floor, turning both toes under, rolling up into the cat stretch again, lifting from lower back, not from middle back or shoulder blades. Then releasing. And now taking a moment to make your way to your chosen Shavasana position. So you may choose to do this seated. You may like to lay back on the floor again. And remember your options are that you can either lie with the knees bent or with the feet and the hands equal distance from the midline of the body. Just allow yourself to become comfortable, pulling on warmer layers if needed. And once more, returning your full awareness to the breath. Just take a few moments to feel the weight of your body sink into the floor. To remind yourself to unclench. To soften the jaw, the shoulders. To let go of all that engagement in the core, in the pelvis. Just allowing that weight at the back of the hips to sink and release a little more deeply. Making any adjustments you need to. Moving clothing if that's going to distract you. And as you tune into the breath. Invite the mind to quiet and the body to relax. Bring your awareness fully to the breath. Monitoring that slow, deep inhalation. That long, steady exhalation. Once again, filling the lungs completely. Then emptying the lungs fully. Remember that every out breath is a release. Ridding your body of toxins, any negative energy. Every full deep inhalation recharges your body. Sending positive energy to the parts of the body that need it most. Giving yourself permission to release. Submitting the weight of your body to the floor. To relax. Tune into the sound closest to you, the sound of your breath. The 
simply rest here. And breathe here. Any time the attention wanders, return the focus to the breath. Become aware again of that expansion and widening through the lungs and the ribcage. That soft release. Shanti And in your own time, start to make little movements in the body to return sensation, return your awareness to the shape of your body, the space you occupy in this room. Feeling the fingers and toes. Wiggling the jaw and the nose. If you remain outstretched, take a long stretch through the body. If you prefer, hug the knees to the chest. Take your time to roll to the side that feels most welcoming to you. Then return to a comfortable, seated position.
bring your hands to an Anjali Mudra. Touch to the head for kind thoughts, to the lips for kind words, and to the heart for kind intentions. The light in me honours the light in you. Namaste. Thank you 